Hey everyone, Josh here. Uh, working on this silver Touareg again. Um, now we're on to some electrical issues. Uh, we're doing a battery drain, or we're, I've been diagnosing a battery drain issue. Um, I was going to start the video tonight on that, but I've gotten into a bad habit of uh, checking battery voltage with my multimeter on the amp setting, which blows the fuse right away. So yeah, I don't have a fuse in there, so I can't really do a video very well. So instead, we're doing the other issue, which is the gauge cluster lights don't work. So I'll um, maybe splice in a video here. It's dark outside now, so I'll splice in a video during the daylight of how to get to this point here. And then uh, we'll follow along with some rough diagnostics, I guess. Okay, so we're at my uh, temporary parts torig here. So we're gonna pull the cluster out. So it's quite easy on these. Just kind of grab a hold of here. Gently get that out of there. I'm not sure why that one's being so stubborn. Grab this one here. If you got a second hand, you should maybe catch it. But yeah, just a bunch of push pins. So then, some torque screws. I'm gonna set the camera down for this. Okay, so with that, out, you can now remove this inside center. I'm kind of fighting the sun here. So then you've got one, two holding the I don't know, the shelf, I guess you'd call it, in. And then you've got three holding your gauge in, and then two that come up from the top and hold it in. So we'll pop those out here. So this piece was what was facing us. You just kind of lift that up. And this cover here, you just undo your two bolts, then pull it up towards you, and then it's out of the way. So now, the cluster's kind of free. So it kind of works nice. Shove that kind of to the passenger side. Not a, not a real exact science here. Okay, well, I went to the driver's side there. You can kind of just shove it past the inside hole there. Comes out sideways a little bit. Kind of get it up to this point. And then these ones, I'm gonna need both hands, but you just push down on that locking tab and then lift this purple piece up, which isn't too hard, but it is hard with one hand, so I'll stop the video here. So the issue with this one is the needles light up, but the backlight for all your gauges don't work. So, oh, where's the key? So, this is our issue. 
So when we turn the light on, if you look at the needle and if you use your dimmer switch, I might not be able to get that on camera, but anyways, so the dimmer seems to work, which your backlights should work as well. So I'm assuming that's all supposed to be tied in on the same circuit, but the bulb for that portion doesn't seem to be working. So I'm thinking I've got good power to it. There's an issue there with the lights or the circuit board. So the joys of having multiple Toregs is that I can steal another gauge out of my uh, personal car. So I'm gonna stop this video. I'm gonna swap over. Uh, there's just two connectors on the back side. And uh, yeah, we'll swap over and then uh, see what happens. So I guess you can't really call this diagnostics, more swap gnostics. Um, but yeah, here's my cluster. Which, as you can see, we put the back lights on. You can dim it down. So I got an issue with this other cluster. So I'll put that back in my car so I can get to work in the morning and we'll look at the cluster that came out of here. So the nice part about these Toregs is there's no immobilizer info stored in these clusters, similar to like the cars, like Volkswagen cars. Uh, you can't just simply swap those instrument panels it's because it won't start. So with the Toreg, everything's stored in the Kessie module, so you can swap the cluster without an issue. The only downside is your mileage won't be the same on your scrapyard one or your used one off eBay or wherever you decide to purchase one. So that's, if you suspect you have an issue with your gauge itself, uh, you can just get a one from the wreckers and swap it in. This one, I'm kind of curious what the issue is, so I split it. I wanted to look at the circuit board here, see if there's any hot spots, anything like that. And to do that, you've got this your face that basically just sits on there like that. And then this white piece bolts to that black face. You've got a bunch of little torque screws around the outside. And then just this, uh, assume a speaker kind of clips in the back so you can kind of just reach in there and pop that apart. So, that's the body disassembled. And then to get the needles, so you can kind of check and see if they're at rest spot. So you can make sure it goes back together the same way. We're gonna twist clockwise until it won't go. And then twist and kind of pull up. And then your face can come off. It's a little difficult while I'm holding a camera. Just like that. So now, if I get a soft surface here, Got one, two, three, I think. Then a couple little clips. And then that board should come off. So I'll uh, pop that off, off camera and then we'll uh, see what it looks like. So those screws are out. I undid this little connector, it just kind of pries out gently. Uh, this little ribbon cable for the MFWD, or not MFWD, MFD. Um, I think you just pull these out and then that connector should kind of wiggle out. Um, I'm a little concerned of touching that. I don't want to break the ribbon cable. So you can see, if I 
There doesn't seem to be any LEDs strictly for the back face. It's all kind of shines through here. So this bottom connector is for the CCFL light that does the uh, backlight. So it just clips in there. Um, there and then down here. So again, I'm gonna set the camera down and pop that out. So here it's out. And here's the face, so that would shine up on this glass here and I guess illuminate everything there. And then you've got your lights, your LEDs for all like your um, warning lights, as well as your needle lights down in the center. So that's all LED, whereas this is CCFL. Uh, there is, there's been a few DIYs on converting this to LED. You just basically put an LED strip in, but you need an external power source because I believe these work on AC voltage, whereas uh, most automotive LEDs are DC. So I split my cluster out of my car and basically unplugged my light bar and put this one out of that other cluster in it. And You can't tell that's lit up, so I'm going to say that light is good to go. Um, something on the circuit board is faulty, so I'm going to ohm some stuff out and see if I can uh, can't dig any farther. So looking looking this up on eBay, it came up as a VOGT transformer, not an inverter. So that number is the same as this one up here. So that goes to your plug, which goes to your center display here. So I'm not going to touch that one for now. I'm just going to do this one here. So the ones from eBay are 30 to 60 days away. Uh, who knows with the backlog when it would actually show up. So I'm going to steal the one out of my other cluster. So I'm going to use some desoldering wick, get that off of there. Got a few pins across there, two there, and then uh, seal it out with my other one. So there's the old one out. Touch of flux there, helped a little bit. So, I guess now uh, I'll take the donor one out. So here's the second one out. It went a lot better than the first one. So, I would definitely recommend just getting new ones, not trying to salvage them out of uh, one of the wreckers. So I guess it is what it is, but I'll clean that up and then uh, stick it in the, into the uh, original one. So there's the soldered back on. So now we'll uh, plug the light bar in and see how it works. So there's our uh, LEDs for the warning lights, and then I'll turn that on. Red LEDs light up, and then this bar lit up now as well. So it's just that bottom transformer, I guess. Um, there seem to be a few of them listed for sale on eBay under the like for a Toreg VOGT repair kit. So I'm not sure if it's fairly common or not, but that was the issue on this one. So I didn't really film the reassembly here too much. Um, if you took it apart, you can put it back together. The main thing for the um, speaker here, I basically clipped it into there like that. The wire goes into that holder there. And then when I set the circuit board down, uh, it just goes onto those two spades, so you can just kind of line it up, and then as you go down, you, yeah, it's not rocket science. Uh, as far as the needles, you want to make sure they're all have a nice gap in there, and that they're also 
when they hit the bottom that they're at their at rest state. Um, if it goes too far one way or the other, you can push, tweak it down or basically go to the stop and then just tweak it past just a hair. So, gonna bolt that, clean that all up, bolt it together and uh, yeah, it'll be good to go. So thanks for watching and hope that, hopefully this helps.